big news coming out of the Supreme Court. The only government department where the dress code is retired Jedi. <laughs> you all know how America has been struggling with gun violence for the past, let's say, uh, half a century or so? Well, while everyone is trying to figure out a solution, the Supreme Court just weighed in in the most unhelpful way possible. Breaking news at this hour. The U.S. Supreme Court has just issued a major ruling in the challenge to a New York gun law. Now, this is the most significant Second Amendment ruling in more than a decade. In a 6-3 to three decision, the court struck down New York's law, which places restrictions on concealed handguns. The law in question in New York said to get a concealed carry permit, a person had to go to the county sheriff and show some special need. Today, the Supreme Court said that's unconstitutional, so this will affect New York and it'll affect half a dozen other states that have similar laws in which you had to show some heightened need beyond just a general desire for self-defense to get a concealed carry permit. This expands the Second Amendment right, what we don't know is if it completely eliminates the possibility for any sort of gun, gun regulation. Oh, I think we do know. I think we do know. You can see where this is going. This Supreme Court is feeling themselves, huh? Because you realize they finally have all the justices they need to do anything they want. It's like Amy Coney Barrett was the last Infinity Stone that they needed. Yeah, they put it in, and now they're just snapping away at all the laws. It's like voting rights, gun control, Miranda rights, abortion. Mmm, I love this song. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the Supreme Court has struck down restrictions on who can carry guns outside of the home, saying that you can't require people to meet certain standards in order to get a license, which makes complete sense, because that would be making the militia well-regulated. And I mean, you can't do that, you know? <laughs> it's not like it's written anywhere. Basically, <laughs> New York had a law for the past 100 years that said if you want to just carry a gun around with you wherever you go, you need to prove that you have a specific reason. You need that gun, you know, for your protection. You have to go to the police, you have to tell them, you have to explain the whole thing, like maybe someone is making threats against you, or, or, or maybe you're Liam Neeson's daughter and people keep trying to kidnap you, <laughs> even though it seems like it would be way easier to kidnap anyone else's daughter at this point. <laughs> and the Supreme Court has said to New York, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. And you know, in a way, this is exciting as a New Yorker. Yeah, because I, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I've been sitting in rush hour traffic in New York with drivers screaming at each other and, and bikers cussing out the drivers and pedestrians wailing at the bikers and the drivers, the one thing I always think is, man, one thing that would calm this down is if everyone had a gun right now. <laughs> Just a Glock or two would really chill this situation out. I mean, it will switch things up, you know? Now, when you're on the subway and you see a guy reaching into his pants, you'll be like, oh, please let it be a dick, please let it be a dick. <laughs> let it be a dick, oh, please let it be a penis. <laughs> and it's crazy how this ruling is coming down at the exact same time that Congress finally reached a deal on gun reform. It took 30 years of trying to come up with these extremely minor gun safety measures, and then the Supreme Court just swoops in and moves everything back in the other direction. Yeah, Congress is like, we've reached a bipartisan agreement that <laughs> 18 to 21 year olds can no longer buy guns in leap years between the hours of <laughs> 3 a.m. and 3.15 a.m. And then the Supreme Court is like, all right, check this out. Starting now, every time it rains, it rains guns, yeah? <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> so this is obviously a big setback for gun safety. But if you ask me, New York just needs to get creative. Yeah, they need to think outside of the box. In the same way that Texas did, right? Look at what Texas did with banning abortion. They weren't allowed to ban it. So they just made a crazy new law that basically banned it anyway. That, that's what New York needs to do with guns. Like, yeah, they should say, okay, anyone can buy a gun if they want, but the gun stores are only open on the nights that the Knicks win. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on from the people. <laughs> you know what's funny is like, whenever I'm at Madison Square Garden and I see the players, they're like, did you, I'm like, I don't make that joke. I love, I don't make these jokes. <laughs> all right, let's move on from the people who are about to cause havoc with all their guns to the people who are already causing havoc with all their guns, the police. Over the last year, the city of Chicago has been rocked by incidents where police saw a civilian running away 
They decided to chase after them, and somehow they ended up killing them. So now the police department has a new plan to stop those types of killings before they start. Chicago police officers will no longer be allowed to chase people on foot simply because they run away or give chase over minor offenses. The new policy requires enhanced supervision. Officers must file a report if they start a chase. Foot chases will be reviewed and officers must weigh the seriousness of the offense against the need to make an arrest. Officers can't start a chase if they're hurt, unaware of their location, unable to communicate or lose their radio or gun. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're a cop who's lost your radio and gun and you don't know where you are, <laughs> you are in no position to be chasing anyone. <laughs> yeah, maybe just throw in the towel, my man. Today's not your day. <laughs> but I think this policy actually makes sense because people used to assume that if you're running from a police officer, you must have done something wrong and you need to be chased down. But there are many reasons why someone might want to run from the police. Maybe they're scared of the police. Or maybe the cop is their ex and they were just walking around in sweats <laughs> and they don't want their ex to see them and be like, oh, looks like I made the right choice. <laughs> and even if the person is a legitimate suspect, you want to make sure that the crime is worth the chase, right? Because when police chase a suspect, it is way more likely to end in violence. Think about it, once somebody makes you sprint across half the city, you're way more likely to want to beat their ass when you catch them. <laughs> yeah, nobody's happy when they're forced to run. Even people running marathons are like, as soon as I get to the finish line, I'm gonna choke somebody. <laughs> All right, finally, let's move on to some international news. Right now, inflation is out of control. And I mean, we all know this, except probably Jeff Bezos, you know? <laughs> yeah, he probably treats bank accounts the same way the rest of us treat closet space. He's like, oh, where do I keep my winter dollars? There's no more space! <laughs> but for everyone else, inflation hurts. Prices are skyrocketing. Wages aren't keeping up. And it turns out it's not just America. This is happening all over the world, which is weird because Fox News told me that Joe Biden is the only reason we have inflation. So that means he's also causing it in Denmark? Damn you, Joe! <laughs> now, one country in particular that's been struggling is the United Kingdom, right? Where railway workers have been demanding an increase in their pay to help deal with inflation. But their demands have been ignored. So this week, they took action. Britain faces its biggest rail strikes in three decades after last-minute talks between a union and train companies failed to agree on pay. Up to 40,000 staffers staged a walkout in a protest over pay and job security. Good morning from a quieter than normal Paddington station where just one in five services will be running, as indeed they are around the country. The Prime Minister has told his cabinet these strikes are wrong and unnecessary. I want to say something about the rail strikes that are today causing significant disruption and inconvenience up and down the country, make it more difficult for people to get to work, uh, risking uh, people's appointments, make it more difficult for kids to sit exams, all sorts of unnecessary uh, aggravation uh, this is going to cause. Yes, it's preposterous. I, I mean, I, I need those trains to get to my illegal work parties. How else am I supposed to spread COVID? I mean, think about it. This is really ridiculous. This is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, British railway workers are on strike. And now, British people have no way to travel to their silly sounding towns. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. Someone from Barton in the Beans can travel to Giggleswick or to Upton Snodsbury or even to Nether Wallop. How will they get to Nether Wallop? <laughs> but for real, though, for real, for real. The truth is, a railway strike is actually really serious, right? Because it is crippling for the UK. So many of its people depend on the trains. You know, and I, I know you guys think British people just get around on flying umbrellas, but that's just the nannies. <laughs> the people need the trains. And please, don't get me wrong, I also understand that this train strike inconveniences countless people in the UK. But you know who's also inconvenienced, right? Because people are complaining. In the UK, they're like, oh, these people need to get back to work. This is terrible. Just get back to work. But the train workers are inconvenienced. You realize train workers in the UK can't afford to make ends meet anymore. And there's many of them who haven't gotten a pay increase in 10 years. So if now's not the time to get a wage increase, and 10 years ago wasn't the time, and then nothing in between was the time, then when, when is the time? 
right? Because I don't care what anybody says. I really don't. It's not fair for somebody to work a full-time job but not be able to make ends meet, especially when your bosses make millions in profits. Yeah. Like, if you... <laughs> if you can't afford to live, then what's even the point of working? You only work so that you can live. That's why it's called making a living, all right? Working without living is like being a parent, but there's no kid. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Like parents, every parent knows that being a parent is miserable, but then your kid, they just, they smile at you or they do something for the first time and you're like, oh, it's all worth it. It was so adorable. <laughs> but imagine if there was no child, huh? <laughs> imagine if there was no child, but you still got woken up in the middle of the night by screams out of no, ah! Ah! And there's nothing, or just every now and again, there's just diapers filled with shit everywhere in your house. <laughs> and you just gotta, you just be like, there's no child, what am I doing this for? <laughs> What's the point? And that's what these workers are going through. So this train strike is a big deal. It is affecting customers, it's affecting employees, it's affecting the British economy. But you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know who this also affects? The British trains. Now that I've stopped working, I've had a lot of time alone with my thoughts. <laughs> and I've realized, what the hell am I? <laughs> I'm a train. I'm Thomas the train, but I have a human face. But where's the rest of my body? <laughs> Do I have arms somewhere? Do I have a penis? <laughs> is it a human penis? Or is it a train penis? Help me, somebody. Help me find my train penis. <laughs> That's it for the headlines. But before we go to a quick break, let's check in on the stock market with our finance expert, Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> what's going on, Mike? Yeah. Good to see you again. So, yeah. uh, what's happening in the market today? I'm crushing it. I mean, I know I always say this, but I am actually really crushing yeah, it. Yeah, you, you are, but you never tell us how. What's okay, that, what's well, I, I got a hot tip. I got a hot tip for how you can crush it in the market, and uh, I'll share that with you. Okay, okay but, cool. But obviously, the big news today, uh, Kellogg's, America's food staple, their stock is moving big as they announced that they're actually separating into three separate companies. Yeah, I, I saw that because yeah. they do snacks and they do cereals, yeah. and like, but, but I, don't, I don't understand. They're splitting into three companies. Yeah. Like, how's that gonna work? Uh, easy, it's gonna be uh, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. <laughs> you wanna... You walk into the, you want to get to the chart? Let's yeah, get to the chart. Let's, All right, let's so, get to the chart. So look, look, to, to, to a non-expert such as yourself, such as yourself, Trevor, this looks like the Kellogg's chart, okay? But what it actually is is this is a chart measuring how good a bowl of cereal is over time, okay? <laughs> now, when you pour that first bowl of cereal, it is right here, it is dry, it is lifeless, it is undervalued. Now, here's where the value goes up. When you add milk, bang, okay? <laughs> Cereal reaches its most valuable point when you add milk. Now, if you don't eat it right away, that cereal starts to get soggy. This whole thing starts to depreciate. Now, I've identified a very important part of this timeline. I call this the SMBB, the sugar milk bowl bounce. Bang, right there. You know what this is. That's that special mix of milk with sugar, with yellow number five, with corn syrup, okay? Right here, Trevor, you are sitting on a lot of liquidity, all right? <laughs> and that liquid is delicious milk, so. So, uh, now, yeah, you get it, you get it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think you get it. Yeah. This is a difficult market to understand. That's why I'm an expert. Is this a bear market? Is this a bull market? This is a tiger market, okay? <laughs> because if you're Kellogg's right now, you're seeing this and you're thinking, things are going great, okay? <laughs> Now, now, Trevor, I made a fortune on this. I got a buddy who works at Kellogg's and he told me from the inside that they were gonna split up into three companies, so I bought a bunch of stock the day before. Oh, Co Costa, that, that's, that's insider trading. Well, that makes sense because I have a shitload of money inside my bank account, okay? <laughs> so, uh, oh, the UK train strike. Yes. Yeah, that's that story. You know, I, I'm sorry. When I hear Boris Johnson talking about that, I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't give a f okay? Because, look, as an American, we're dealing with too much shit right now, okay? The Supreme Court just announced that everybody in this audience can have a loaded gun in their pocket, and I'm supposed to be worried about Britain's little choo-choo train problem, okay? 
here's the problem, Trevor. If you get on a train in Brixton and you go into Newcastle and, it, and it's 100K and it costs 10 quid and your buddy's 30 stuff, how many? I don't give a f okay? <laughs> That's your biggest problem, Britain? That some of you are gonna have to take a free ambulance to work? <laughs> I can put a... I can put a semi-automatic rifle in my backpack as I walk my daughter to daycare, okay? Okay, uh, do, you, do you have a hot tip then, Michael? You seem a little stressed, man. What's the, yeah, what's the I, tip? Yeah, I already told you. Get a buddy who works at the cereal store. He tells you when this value is going to no. go up and buy the stock. Michael, no, that's illegal. We need a tip that we okay, can okay, use. Okay, okay, all right, all right. So if you want to save some money, all right? You don't need to buy the cereal to get the toy inside. All right? You go to the store, you rip open the box, search around, you find the toy, you walk out of there, it's free. Boom. You know what? I'm so glad we have you for this expert advice. Michael Costa, everybody.